In this very brief cursory lecture, we're going to do a brief overview of what's called missing data. And so what I mean by missing data is missing observations for one or more variables in a data frame or data set. Now a little bit of missing data is usually not a problem, but when we start to have more substantial amounts of missing data or missing observations or systematically missing data, then we start to run into some problems. And so again, this is going to be a cursory brief overview of missing data just to make you aware of the potential issues and some potential solutions. But in general, I'll point you towards the resources that I show at the end if you really want to get into this in more depth. You could learn, have an entire course on missing data theory and analysis as part of a graduate program. So to start off, there is a voluminous literature on missing data. And interestingly, this has really cropped up in the psychology literature and specifically the psych methods and statistics literature as well. And so there's been a number of great pieces written or articles written about the topic of missing data and our thinking on this has really evolved quite a bit over the past two to three decades. And so when we think about missing data, we can think about addressing it before data analysis and then actually during the data analysis process. So if you do come across a situation where you start noticing missing observations or values for certain variables, you should consider these things before actually engaging in the data analysis. First, depend, determine whether a missing value means that the value is actually not attainable through some other means. It could be that you're able to uncover or recover that missing value because perhaps someone forgot to transcribe it, forgot to enter it, but it's maybe sitting on a physical paper document or something like that, and you can find the value. If that's possible, I highly recommend doing that because otherwise there's some assumptions that you're making regarding if there is the absence of that value for a particular observation or a particular case or individual, that could have certain implications in terms of the, if, the types of findings that you come up with as well as your interpretation of them. Now the other considerations you might want to consider is making sure that a missing value does not indicate a zero value. So occasionally you might work with someone or you might have received a data set or data frame in which someone chose to code, it's not really coding in this case, but they chose to omit a value if they wanted to imply that the value for that variable is actually zero. Now zero and missing are two different things. Missing means that you don't even know whether that is zero and zero means that you're saying it's the absence of that variable or it's a certain level of that variable if it's categorical. So for instance, if it was zero is male and one is female, zero would indicate male in this case. So we wanna be really careful about that. And this is where it's good to have good documentation and understand who was it that originally entered this data, gathered the data, acquired the data, or whatever the case might be, and then perhaps pay a visit to that person, ask them questions to learn more about what these data actually mean particularly if there's missing values. Maybe they'll have some insights into why certain people are missing variables or missing values, and that could explain certain things about whether or not the data are missing at random or missing not at random. We get more concerned in the latter case when things become missing not at random. Okay, so the other thing we can do too ahead of time is perhaps you have a variable where so many cases are missing observations or values for that variable that you might choose to just drop that variable altogether. So this could be one of those instances where for whatever reason on a survey for instance 98% of people did not respond to that one survey item. Well there's not much you can do at that point if you can't recover the data or collect that data in some other way. And so in that instance it might be the best decision just to say hey we maybe better luck next time, maybe we should design this item better so that people would have been more comfortable responding to it or whatever the reason might be that they chose not to respond. Okay, so what can we do during data analysis? Well, this is where some of the missing data techniques come in that are most popular today. Now, a lot of statistical software packages are going to default to something like listwise or pairwise deletion. Now, this isn't necessarily a bad approach, and what this means is if one person, for instance, with listwise deletion, if one person has a missing value on one of the variables that's in the model that you're estimating, well, then they're gonna be stricken from the record. They'll be removed from that analysis. And now, this might not be a bad thing if you, if you don't have much missing data and if those data are missing completely at random. Now, if you do think that there might not be complete randomness to the nature of the missing data, or you have a more substantial amount of missing data, then you'll definitely wanna pursue multiple imputation or full information maximum likelihood. And fortunately, there are a number of packages 
statistical packages in R and other platforms that allow you to use multiple imputation, full information, maximum likelihood with some degree of ease today. In fact, things like multiple imputation used to be a lot harder to do just 10 years ago. And so now there's some R packages that help you deal with that. And full information maximum likelihood is possible in, for instance, the Levon package in R if you choose to use that for path analysis, regression, and so forth. So when it comes to missing data, in most cases, there shouldn't be too much concern, for example, when you're only missing, let's say, 0 to 10% of the data in your data frame or in the, for the model that you're attempting to estimate. That's not usually going to be too problematic, but when we start to see more or higher percentages or proportions of missing data for variables that you're including in your model, then we start to get more concerned. And we need to start asking questions about what type of missingness is this for each variable? And so this gets to be a little bit theoretical, conceptual, and I'm just going to briefly touch on the three types of missingness that we've really landed on in the statistics and methodology literatures. And then I'll point you to some resources where you can really dig in if you want to learn more about this. So the three types of missingness are first, missing completely at random, or MCAR as the acronym goes. This is what you want. This is, means that there's no systematic missingness. It's essentially random missingness. And so that means that the probably, probability of missing data for a focal variable is not associated with values on that, the variable itself, and is not associated with other measured variables that you might have. It just means that it's just kind of a random occurrence that these some people are missing values on this, some people aren't. There's no systematic reason that you can point to that suggests why they're missing data. So this is really the best situation you could find yourself in. Now, the next best situation is what's referred to as missing at random or missing at random. And the name's a little bit misleading because it actually doesn't mean that people are missing data at random. There actually means that there is some systematic reason that you can identify or potentially identify for why people, some people are missing data and some people aren't on certain variables. And so missing at random or MAR is the probability of missing data for a focal variable not associated with the values on that variable itself, but is associated with other variables. And this is sometimes referred to as ignorable missingness when full information maximum likelihood or multiple imputation are used. So you can use full information maximum likelihood or multiple imputation for missing completely at random or missing at random. And this is fine to do in these contexts. Now, when you get to the third type of missingness, this is where things get a lot more challenging. And this is when data are missing not at random, or miss, in other words, the acronym goes MNAR. And when con this, the idea behind this is that when controlling for other variables that you have, the probability of missing data on a focal variable is in fact associated with the values on the variable itself. So in other words, the level at which someone has scores on that particular variable or theoretically could have scores on that particular variable actually affect whether or not they actually responded to the survey item that's related to that variable or whatever the case might be. And so, for instance, you can imagine if this is a physical health measure that your people are responding to, well, if someone's health is so low and they're feel having such illness or poor health, they might be incapable of actually responding to that measure. And it doesn't mean that they don't exist on that continuum theoretically for whatever that health measure is assessing. It just means they weren't able to provide data. So they have a missing value on that. And that means that the variable itself, the health variable, can actually explain who's missing data on that. And so this would be missing not at random. This is very much systematic missing data. And so this is very problematic. And so this is what we really want to try to avoid, is missing not at random. So one of the best defenses against missing data is to try to design your data collection, your data acquisition tools and techniques to get as complete of data as possible. Now, that's not always going to be something that you can fully anticipate. And you're not always going to know why people don't respond to certain things or why you couldn't get data for something. But do your best up front to get all the data you can and get as complete data as you can. And you can hopefully avoid having to deal with things like your data being missing not at random. So this also goes along with thinking very carefully about what variables you're measuring and how you're measuring them and thinking about would it be likely that some people won't be able to provide data for this particular variable because of their theoretical or conceptual level along that continuum that corresponds with that variable itself. 
So again, missing data is something that we should be concerned with, potentially, or particularly when we have greater amounts of it. A little bit of missing data isn't probably going to systematically influence the inferences we make or our data analytic findings, but a lot of missing data can. So if you're wanting to learn more about this, I highly recommend the following two resources. So the second one is Schaefer and Graham, and this is their article titled Missing Data, Our View of the State of the Art. And this is from 2002 in a journal called Psychological Methods, which is a very high quality peer reviewed journal that um, methodologists and statisticians in the area of psychology publish in. It's a really great resource. Now a more recent book that came out is by Craig Enders and it's published in 2010 and it's called Applied Missing Data Analysis. And this is an excellent treatment of missing data. And so it covers everything from theoretical concepts around missing data to actual ways that you can try to infer whether or not the data are missing and what you can do about missing data using different types of techniques. Now the book tends to focus mostly on missing at random because this is the type that you can actually engage in more troubleshooting around and actually there's more applications we can use to try to address this. And then they talk about some of the areas that are more or less controversial around missing data and different tools and techniques that you can apply um, in different ways to address the level of missingness you have or the type of missingness. So this wraps up the, the brief but cursory lecture on missing data. Again, this wasn't meant to be exhaustive, but hopefully this gives you a flavor for why we should think about missing data and why we do need to think more about it. But it's also an inherently complex area and we are learning more and more. Fortunately, we're at a point of time where the statistical software that we're using have tools that you can deploy with well relative ease right now that allows you to address missing data while also keeping up your statistical power too. And so that's what full information maximum likelihood and multiple imputation can do if your data are missing completely at random or missing at random. Thank you very much.